Hi, I'm Robert McClemon, and this is another quick video for students in ES-102 at Wilfrid Laurier University. This is a quick introduction to the fifth lab that we do in the course. Uh, this lab is called, Are We Suffering from Nature Deficit Disorder at WLU? I'm out here today. It's uh, middle of March. It snowed really heavily last night. So as you can see behind me, I'm out here on my skis, going for a little ski today, a little unstructured play. And um, that's the point of this lab, is to talk about unstructured uh, play, or more to the point, the absence of it in our day-to-day -day lives. It's based on something called, uh, a concept called nature deficit disorder. Now, nature deficit disorder is not an actual clinical diagnosis that a doctor would give you. It's a term that was coined by an American author by the name of Richard Louvre. And Mr. Louvre's argument is that in today's society, where we live in, you know, in cities and we don't spend a lot of time out of doors, we are actually denying ourselves some very important experiences that are necessary for our psychological and physiological well-being. He's particularly concerned about the welfare of children, arguing that as a species, humans are hardwired that we need to have some experience outside on a regular basis in touch with nature in order to maintain our health and well-being. And children who are denied that experience suffer accordingly. Now, there's some, uh, there's some research, some scientific research, to support Mr. Louvre's uh, hypothesis. For example, in Japan, where a lot of people live in some very, very crowded urban areas and where there's not a lot of natural space in those urban areas, scientists have done some experiments. They've taken teenagers and young people out of the city and uh, taken them into the forest for a three-day walking tour. Nothing great, you know, no great strenuous uh, exercise or anything like that, but just out into a forested area to spend a few days. What they found were two things. One is that at the end of the trip, all of the participants said that, you know, they felt healthier and they felt better psychologically. But the scientists also took blood samples from them and found that their immune systems had been bolstered by being out in nature for a few days. And what the scientists believe is that these trees that you see around me here, uh, a lot of them are dormant right now because they're deciduous ones, but there's coniferous ones as well that are active right now, just over, my, over behind me there. And these trees, they excrete chemicals throughout the year when they're growing. And these chemicals do two things. One is that it's how trees communicate with one another. They actually send chemical signals to one another. The other thing that these chemicals do is that they help the trees ward off diseases, fungal infections and things like that. And the scientists believe that when we are out here in the forest, breathing in the forest air, we are taking in these chemicals that the trees use to boost their immune systems, and that these chemicals are beneficial for ours. And so the hypothesis is that by living in cities and by not getting a lot of outdoor unstructured play, we are denying ourselves these healthy chemicals that can boost our immune systems. Now, there's some other things going on as well. There's been some clinical research that shows that children who suffer from ADHD, uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, uh, these children do very well when they are allowed to uh, play in an unstructured environment out of doors. And in fact, their symptoms uh, disappear quite rapidly. Obviously, our current educational system, where we force kids to sit in classrooms uh, or play on cement playgrounds, doesn't really, isn't really conducive to, that, uh, to someone suffering from that. There's other uh, studies that show that the more time that we spend in front of computer screens, both as children and as adults, uh, or TV screens, the more likely we are to be obese or to have weight issues. So a lot of this stuff seems to, a lot of the scientific evidence seems to uh, coincide with this idea that there is something called nature deficit disorder. And the remedy to it is to simply get people out of doors, outside playing uh, in unstructured environments. So, you know, by unstructured, what that means is not just simply sending the kids off to a soccer game or something like that, but simply taking them to a park and letting them run around and just be kids. So in this lab, what we're going to do is two things. One is that there's two activities you're going to do. Um, you're first you're going to go to your lab meeting with your instructor and you're going to look at a film about nature deficit disorder which talks about it in greater detail. Uh, and then you're going to talk about and reflect upon some of your own experiences in unstructured outside play. The next thing you're going to do is after the lab you're going to do two activities. The first is to keep a log uh, of your own experience out of doors. And what I want you to do is select a 48 hour period during the week between Monday and Friday uh, and I want you to keep track of all the time that you're outside. And this can be waiting for a bus or walking from dorms to classrooms or what have you. But just keep track of all the minutes that you spend outside and what activities you're doing. 
And after you've kept a log for 48 hours, then do some basic statistics to figure out what percentage of your time on an average uh, weekday in March during semester, how much of that time is spent out of doors. And then compare it to the average across the United States, which is that the average teenager in the United States spends about two hours out of doors uh, on average each day. And see how your score uh, compares with that. And then reflect upon it and decide whether you think that you might uh, benefit from some more unstructured activity that's fun out of doors. The second thing you're going to do then is to think about the WLU campus, which quite frankly is not very conducive to out of door unstructured fun. Uh, there's a lot of parking lots, a lot of buildings, and not a lot of space. And what you want to do is think about whether there's an activity that could be organized or some sort of modification that could be made to campus in order to uh, make it more conducive to unstructured outdoor play for people who are undergraduate students or professors. And then you're going to do a little report as you always do and submit it via My Learning Space. Well, my hands are starting to get cold out here. It's about minus 15, so I'm having trouble holding the camera. I'm going to go finish my ski now. The snow is spectacular. Uh, and this is my idea of a good way to spend unstructured playtime out of doors here in Canada in March. So I hope you enjoy this lab, and I'll see you in class. Bye-bye now.